Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. Uh, it is five o'clock Eastern time and we're doing a little bit of Simon Daily Dinners. This is where I get you in your pantry, in your fridge, see what you got, we put something together, offer you lots of substitutions, all kinds of ideas around here, all kinds of ideas. So today we're gonna make halushki and this is something that I grew up eating as a kid. As a lot of you know, my mother is Greek and Sicilian, but my father is Eastern European, and my grandfather, who I refer to as Pap, who is 102 years old, young. Hey, Pap, what up? <laughs> um, used to make a lot of great dishes like this one. Now, often you'll see um, Lushki, it'll be with noodles and bacon. Um, Pat made his with like a like kind of, he always called it spetzel, but it's a kind of like giant dumplings. Um, and in addition to the spetzel, he used ham. So you could certainly do this with bacon or you could do this with any kind of lunch, cured lunch meat that you have. So I had ham today. Um, you could use smoked turkey, you could use ham, you could use salami. It won't be very Eastern European, but it will still be delicious. Um, so, and it's dish comes together pretty quickly. So the first thing I have is I have ham, almost a half a pound of ham. Um, and I'm gonna cut it in with, here's the thing with this, and this was kind of, I think, whatever kind of mood Pap was in. First of all, remember ham is already cooked. It's been cured and smoked. So all we're doing at this point is I'm, I wanna crisp it up so it's good to go. So I have a pan over medium high heat turn it up a little bit. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of butter. That's how Pat did it. This is two <laughs> sticks of butter. If you don't have butter or can't find butter, um, you could certainly do this uh, with oil too. Um, or if you have like saved rendered bacon fat or something like that, that would be delicious. But you could do this with oil. The other good news is, is if you are a veg, which a lot of people are, um, you could omit the ham and you could just do cabbage and onions and the dumplings and you have a great um, veg dish but there are eggs in the dumpling but you know where I'm coming from um, in the ham goes and I'm just gonna let this ham start to crisp up but again sometimes Pat cut the ham in the strips sometimes he cut it in the cubes sometimes he cut the onions in the strips sometimes he cut it in the cubes it just kind of depended on how he was feeling Wipe down my board real good. And so I'm gonna slice these onions up. That's how I'm feeling today. I'm gonna slice onions and slice cabbage. Um, a lot of people have had questions about basic knife skills. So, you know, obviously the more you use a knife, the more comfortable you get with it. I like to use an eight, eight or 10 inch chef knife for everything I do. Four finger thumb, boom, wrap the last three fingers around, make the claw, including the thumb. That's the guide. And you just, as you move your left hand back, the side of the blade follows the front of your left hand. And that's what controls it so you're slicing nice and even. So there you go. Onions are done. Cabbage. <clears throat> Any kind of cabbage you can find. Uh, Savoy, hard cabbage, white cabbage, red cabbage, Brussels sprouts, all will work here as will delicious hearty style greens um, like uh, beet greens, um, collard greens, mustard greens, anything that's really hearty that'll hold up to a saute would work great in this situation. Cabbage to me is one of the most underrated vegetables there are. Uh, just the other day when we used some in the one pan chicken dish, Liv was like, I don't like cabbage. And I said, do you like Brussels sprouts? She said, yes, I love Brussels sprouts. But when you cook the cabbage kind of hard and it gets some caramelization texture to it, it totally changes. And Liv was like, oh my God, I like cabbage. <laughs> Who knew? So um, I am a big fan of cabbage and, and keeping the youth of America to love cabbage like I love cabbage. You learn something new every day. Well done, Liv. Proud of you. Still can't get Kyle to eat cabbage, but I'm happy that you're <laughs> Jessica was asking what you do with the leftover parts from the cabbage. Um, well, these are just the core. So, I mean, if you're, really, if you're really trying to use every single bit, you could juice them. Cabbage juice is very good for you. You could throw them in a stock. But cabbage, I don't think, adds a whole lot to a stock. So 
If you wanted to juice it, have at it, have a little bit of, you know, gassy juice for yourself <laughs> at home. But I, I just, I don't do much with it. But you can compost it. We compost here at the Simon, so pretty much everything. Um, if I have leftovers, like onion pieces, I put in the stock. Other stuff, I compost, and then one good shape. So the handle is almost crisp. Everything's cut. Now I'm going to add my onions to the butter and the ham. And I put the ham in first so it could get a little bit of caramelization, but it's also going to throw some of its smokiness off into the butter, which is going to put more flavor through this sauce for this whole pasta or halushki. Now I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there. You don't have to salt like crazy because there's a good amount of salt um, in your ham. And there's also going to be salt in our pasta water for our dumplings. So that's not a problem there. That's going. Now we're going to put in some paprika. I'm using, one of the questions people are like in the recipe is for Hungarian paprika. There's sweet paprika, there's smoked paprika, there's spicy paprika. All those paprikas will work doesn't matter which one you have in the house, it's just a preference. I'm gonna put in a good amount of paprika. Look, even chefs don't get it all in. It's in now. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see that paprika really kind of mm. goes through the fat and it's really gonna flavor that sauce. I like the smoky in this case because I think it plays nice with the smoky ham. Now we're gonna put in our cabbage. And we're just going to let all this kind of cook down together. And that takes a little bit of time. So that, like the cabbage will start to break down. It'll, it'll shrink a little bit. So, you know, this is going to start looking like a full pot. And as we continue to cook it, it's just going to break down and get smaller and smaller. All right, that goes in. Let that kind of happen. If you have a lid, let me see if I got a lid. If you have a lid, you can pop the lid on and it'll speed up the process of it breaking down. And then I could take the lid off to let it caramelize a little bit. So all this is doing is the moisture is coming out of the cabbage, dropping back down into the sauce, which makes it delicious. Do we got questions? Liz? Yes. Kathy is asking if she doesn't have paprika, what would be a good substitution? Um, you could use cayenne. Um, you could use a lot of people have like Lowry seasoned salt, stuff like that. That will work. Kind of different spice rubs would work. Um, if you have like Old Bay, that would work. Because there's a lot of spice rubs. That paprika is one of those spices that um, is in a lot of different rubs. So if you look at a rub and the rub has paprika in it, you could add the paprika. Could you sub for pork in this? Absolutely. You could go straight veg. You could go smoked turkey. Um, you could go pepperoni, which is typically beef based. Mm -hmm. um, you could go smoked chicken breast or just roasted chicken breast. Um, I like a little bit of smokiness with it, but um, three eggs, three ounces of milk with the milk too. Typically I use whole milk. If you have whole milk at home, you can use whole milk. Um, the only thing in my fridge today was oat milk. So I put oat milk in. If you don't have any milk, water would work too. Oh, we have a special guest. Who do we got? First timer tuning in, Daniel. <laughs> oh, Daniel. Liv's boyfriend is uh, tuning in to see what we have going. Does Daniel have a question, Liv? No, he doesn't. He's not that exciting. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. No comment for me or the peanut gallery. Oh, Heather's oh. asking about um, the 101s. Oh, so the 101s, we're going to start putting those up daily. And they're just going to be really kind of simple, um, quick little classes. I'm going to try to do like probably 10 to 15 basic 101s, like rice pilaf or puree, uh, how to make a stock, how to roast meat, how to braise meat, how to make a stew. And they'll just be very stripped down and very quick. And that way you could use it as a reference point for when people say, braise this, roast this, grill this, 
make a stew, you know, and, and then you could build your dishes from there. So we're gonna start working on those. Also, hopefully it is as helpful for you as I think it will be. Um, we also started, we put a big, like a, a, a cheat sheet for the pantry up. And that's gonna be, every time we post recipe, we'll post the cheat sheet. And it essentially gives you, if I say bean, here's everything you could use. If I say stew meat, here's everything you could use. If I say whatever, here's everything you could use. So it's gonna give you tons and tons of options. So that way, uh, if you're looking at a recipe, whether it's my recipe or someone else's recipe, um, you could say, oh, okay, I don't have this, but I could use this. And then you're really cooking. I mean, that's when the magic happens, <laughs> when you're just like, okay, I got it, man. Michael, I got this. So there, I got the three eggs and the milk. It's about two cups of flour. So I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna start with about a cup and a half. And the reason I do that is because it's hard to get it wet again if it's too dry. So we're gonna hold back on that last half cup and if it needs it, we could sprinkle it in. But what we don't wanna do is get this dough too tight and then we can't bring it back. So look, this is, I probably put in a cup and three quarters and this is about perfect for the spetzel dough. You could use just a touch more. This is kind of a wet style dough. Um, we have a fan asking if it matters if you use brown eggs or white eggs. Any egg you want, pick an egg, any egg. <laughs> Organic, right? and I mean, it, 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 at this point, it's hard to find eggs right now at a lot of grocery stores. And everyone's, here's what you guys gotta understand too, we're putting up these recipes and <clears throat> trying to make them as sub, give you as many options as possible. And sometimes people will say, I don't have that at my store. And then someone else will say, no, there's tons of it. It depends where you live based on what you have. Some stores we have found have lots of things that other stores have nothing of. So that's why we're trying to give you as many substitutions as possible. So that way we cover everybody depending on where you live and what your current situation is. Um, we also put up everything you will need in the pantry for the next 10 days of the recipe. That way, if you could get it delivered, that would be great. Or you could only make one trip to the grocery store as opposed to making a bunch of several trips because let's face it we want to stay at home until they tell us not to stay at home so um, the less trips you make out the better off we all are um we have kathy celebrating her birthday with us tonight or Happy today birthday kathy <laughs> hope you are having a good birthday i know it, times are a little weird right now but that doesn't mean you still can't have a great birthday you enjoy your birthday all right, so next, the dough is made. In a, not even a perfect world, in an easier world, sometimes I'll let the dough refrigerate overnight. And the reason that is, is that way the flour could bloom. It comes together a little bit. It's a little bit easier to work with, but it's, it's still not in, difficult to work with like this. So you could make the dough and go right in. I have my water on high boiling. We're going to salt our water. I keep losing my salt today. Salt the water. And you should, the water should have a touch of a salty flavor. A lot of people say it should taste like the sea or the ocean. You know, you don't want it to be like shockingly salty. But remember, it, you're putting a dough into it. If this doesn't have any seasoning in it, it's going to make your dough bland. Now, this is one of the great tricks my grandfather taught me as a youth. So you get the board wet. If the board fits in the pot, you can just dip the board in. If not, you can get a towel and you get the board wet. You then take your dough and you place it on your board. You have your cutter right here and you also get your cutter wet so then nothing is going to stick now we take the cutter and we just scrape these little dumplings right in to our boiling water and ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages <laughs> we have 
dumplings, pasta, whatever you want to call it. These are going to come up and boil, and then when they boil, we're going to let them cook for a couple more minutes. The great thing about these, as opposed to like some of the Italian pastas, this is a pretty hearty dough. So <clears throat> if it's you don't have to worry about, oh, I cooked it past al dente. Not going to matter. These will hold up really, really well. They're very sturdy. We have a fan asking if it's true you should wait for your water to come to a full boil before putting anything in. Always. So this was at a rolling boil before I started adding things. Um, you, you need the water to be boiling completely before you cook pasta, before you cook vegetables, before you cook anything you want it to be boiling and you want it to be seasoned. That's pretty much a rule across the board. There have been things that I've seen lately that it doesn't change anything. You could cook pasta in cold water. I'm sure that it may work but this is how I'm gonna do it from here to eternity. Um, because if I didn't boil water, if I put my pasta in water that wasn't boiling, or my dose in water that wasn't boiling, my grandmother would come back from the grave and take me back with her. So <clears throat> boiling salted water, you put in the dumplings, the dough, the vegetables, whatever you're cooking. All right, let's see, while those are cooking, let's take a look here at our Stacy's asking, could you have cooked the dumplings and chicken broth? Yeah, you could cook the dumplings and chicken broth. Um, <clears throat> you know, but there, there's going to be, I wouldn't, I don't want to say a waste of chicken broth. It wouldn't be a waste. Um, but they're going to, the dumplings in this are going to have a lot of flavor. Um, so it's not a big deal. So look, we're getting some good caramelization at the bottom of that pan. Could you see in there, Liv? Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for. And that caramelization is where the flavor is, and it's gonna come back up into our sauce and make us very, very happy. All right, I'm gonna keep that going. I have a little parsley in the fridge, I think I'm gonna I think I have just barely any left of it. A lot of people's grandparents are very happy about this dish tonight. I mean, this to me, I mean, if you grew up in uh, <clears throat> Cleveland, parts of Ohio, Pittsburgh, this was something that was on your table a lot. You know, if you grew up in those Eastern European communities, um, Slovak, Polish, Russian, you know, um, I, you know, any of those Eastern Euro uh, communities, this was something that you ate a lot as a kid, some version of this. And I know there's a lot of versions out there, like sometimes, like the first time I ever made a dish like this on TV, you know, people are like, no, you make it with bacon and noodles. I'm like, all right, well, that's not how my grandfather made it. So this is how I make it. It's like, it's almost like the, uh, <clears throat> it's the Eastern European version of Sunday sauce. Like no matter how you make Sunday sauce, someone's going to tell you you're doing it wrong because that's not how their grandmother made it but it's how my grandmother made it. So everyone's just a little bit different and that's okay. It's what makes the world go around. Go around, go, go, go around. All right, so this is, kind of, see how this shrunk lid, it started, yeah. we had it was like filled to the top. So now we want to check the seasoning on this to see where it is. We, we had a fan salt. asking if you could use turmeric in this. Turmeric, sure. Put a little turmeric in there, have at it. It's good for inflammation. Make sure you put pepper, you need pepper with turmeric and then you're good for in the inflammation world. No, it's so funny. Oh, man. What's up? <laughs> Little childhood memories coming at you. Pinch of salt. A little more cracked black pepper. Oh, Pat, I'm telling you, if you're watching right now, you're going to be so happy. So proud of me. We have a lot of people asking if you could freeze um, the dumplings or the entire dish. Um, you could freeze the dumplings after they are cooked and then reheat them just in a little bit of boiling water. You could freeze this. I wouldn't freeze it all together. I'd freeze the cabbage mixture separate from the dumplings. No problem. Or just make this, freeze it, and then make the dumplings as you need them. Because as you saw, the dumplings are pretty quick. All right. So that is right where I want it. I'm going to take a little bit of this dumpling water because it has some of that starch in there and we seasoned it with salt. So we're gonna put a little bit of that dumpling water in there. This is almost the same exact way Italians would make a sauce in the sense that they're using the pasta water to make the sauce come together. 
sometimes when things were really good in the Simon house, Pap would even finish it with some sour cream. I don't have any sour cream currently, so we are not doing that. One more ladle in there. Now we got this beautiful broth sauce. We're gonna take our dumplings out. Okay, wait a second. I need this guy over here. Dana says, have you ever burnt your tongue? You take food right out of the dish. Every time I do a cooking class and demo, look at these little fluffy pillows of heaven right here. We're just putting those right in there. Oh my Lord. Now, I know I have a good amount of Italian in me too. And don't tell my Italian side, but I'll take this over a gnocchi any day of the week. Italian chef friends, Mark Vetri, if you're listening, close your ears. It's okay. I love your gnocchi too, but these babies, that's my childhood. Right there. Okay. Parsley. Nikki's asking if you could have used gluten-free fl flour for the dumplings. I have, I'm sure you can. I've never made it with gluten-free dumplings, so I can't comment 100% how it'll work. Um, but I know people have had success making different pastas with gluten-free dumplings. So I would say yes, but I've just never done it. So it's, it's, I don't want to give it a full endorsement. A couple people are asking, how did you know when the dumplings were done? I just knew. <laughs> um, Basically, once they start floating, you got about another three or three to five, three minutes minimum. It could go up to about five minutes. Um, and then you know they're good. Oh, Liv, you're gonna like this so much. I'm very excited. It's a new dish for me. Yeah. Look at that. We take a little bit of that cabbage, those dumplings. And if you were to add and sour cream, would you I would just, just add it at the end? Right on top. There you go. If I was going to put sour cream, I would just dollop it right on top. Again, that's how my grandfather did it. There you go. That's Papsalushki. The dumplings, the ham, the cabbage, the onions, paprika, a little bit of parsley. If you want to go sour cream, he says it's okay. That's all <laughs> I care about. So, um, you guys, we are going to be back here tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Um, oh, tomorrow we're making a pasta. I'm going back to the Italian side, a pasta with a little bit of crispy salami and chickpea. Delightful. And I showed you all the substitutions for that, too. Um, but <clears throat> you can get the recipes on the Food Network Kitchen Facebook page. You can get them on my Instagram, at Chef Simon. You can get them on my Facebook and Twitter, at Chef Simon, along with the cheat sheets um, and everything else. Let's give it a taste. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> How hot? It's so good, but it's so, like, it's... It's, it's hot, but insanely delicious. The, the spetzels are, they're, the dumplings, they're light. They get a little bit of that paprika. They get that smokiness from the ham, a little bit of goodness from the cabbage. Come on, Liv. Are you afraid? Could you handle this? Is this too hot for you, Liv? Look at the steam coming off I've of it. I've been it. Come on, All right. do it. Oh my God, it's literally Just gonna burn blow. my you mouth. You could do okay. it, you could do it. I'll keep talking. Blow and make sure it's fine. Don't be afraid. Oh my God. Wow. Right? Wow. One of the 102 reasons, which is his age, I love Pat. Um, Pat, this one's for you. you. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow at five. Hang in there. We're going to get through this. Day at a time, meal at a time. Love you. Peace. <laughs>